So why does narcissistic manipulation even work? The thing is, they've got you in a situation where you are now concerned about what they think, what they feel, what they say, and you engage in the conversation, you engage in the drama with them. Without engagement, narcissistic manipulation is frustrating, irritating, annoying, um, unfair, all of that, but it doesn't affect quite the same way. When you engage in anything with a toxic person, it creates relating, okay? And remember, when you're a person with empathy, you relate through your empathy. You relate through self-protection and empathy combined when you're with a toxic person. You're relating to try and make this relationship work, even if it's not an actual relationship, right? Like even if it's just a toxic person you meet randomly, you're trying to have normal human contact and normal human interaction. And I'm not saying you're wrong for engaging. Why are you engaging? It's your fault. You're engaging because most likely if you are in relationship or if you have parents who are toxic and narcissistic, you've been groomed to be there. You have been trauma bonded into this relationship and it is very hard to step away. You feel a sense of need for yourself to have things be okay with this toxic person so that you don't feel not okay about yourself because that's the nature of the relationship. But the reason it keeps going is the engagement. This is why we say gray rock. This is why we say yellow rock. This is why we say no and low contact because engagement with this keeps you in the dance. It keeps you in the cycle and it keeps you feeling frustrated and tuned in to that toxic person, whether it be to appease them, to prove them wrong, to state your point, to be heard, to feel validation, whatever it is, you are still wrapped up in the concerns of that toxic person. When that to people ask all the time, they say, Lise, how can I become indifferent to a narcissist who was in my life? I've been separated for three years. We have a kid together and I still react. Well, one answer is in the engagement. It's in stepping aside from the need to be right, because guess what? You never will be with a narcissist, right? Okay, stepping aside from the need to be right, stepping aside from a need for them to understand you, stepping aside from the need for validation from that toxic person, from connection from that toxic person, from relating to that toxic person, taking all of that out and basically treating it like you're speaking to a machine who can only do one thing because pretty much that's how narcissistic people act. They can only act the way their ego allows them to act. And we know all the traits, okay? We have zillions of videos on what these traits are. That is how they are, you guys. That is how narcissistic people are. So why expect it to be different? Stop engaging. If you have left a narcissist and you need help, please, information in the main description on coaching, group coaching, and peer support. So if you need it, it's there. I know it's not easy to disengage. I know that it is, like if we, if it were that easy, like just don't engage, just don't talk to them, you're fine, <laughs> right? No, it's not that easy and I understand that. But it is a major reason that the narcissistic manipulation works in the first place. And what I would want for all of you and what I'm hoping you want for yourself is freedom from that. Learning to disengage, to have a sense of self-validation, self-worth, and recognizing that somebody who will control you like that, someone who will manipulate you like that, someone that will gaslight you and treat you terribly isn't worth your time. They are not worth your energy and they are certainly not the person to be dictating or controlling how you think and feel about yourself. You guys take care and I will see you next time.